Today, we're traveling back in time to explore an incredible story about our tiny human cousins, Homo floresiensis, also known as the real-life hobbits. And no, we're not talking about Tolkien's fantasy characters, but an actual human species that lived on a small island in Indonesia thousands of years ago. Let me ask you something. Have you ever imagined that humans as small as a primary school child could have lived alongside giant reptiles and terrifying birds? Well, this is a true story, and it's far more fascinating than you might think. To start, let's talk about something we've all noticed, height. In the modern world, being tall is often seen as a positive trait, but if we look back in time, human height has been more like a roller coaster. Some human species were as tall as we are, while others, like Homo floresiensis, were so short they barely reached three and a half feet, one meter. Their story isn't just curious, it also helps us understand how evolution works and how humans adapt to extreme environments. So, in this video, we're going to dive into who these hobbits were, how they lived, and the challenges they faced. Let's get started! It all began in 2003 on the island of Flores, Indonesia. A team of Australian and Indonesian scientists was exploring a cave called Liang Bua. Their initial mission was to search for evidence of the first modern humans, our species, who had migrated from Asia to Australia. It seemed like a routine expedition, but what they discovered completely changed our understanding of human evolution. While excavating deep within the cave, they found a very special skeleton. At first glance, it was clear that it belonged to a human, but something didn't add up. It was incredibly small. The researchers named it LB1, but it soon earned a much more affectionate nickname, the Little Lady of Flores. This wasn't just a simple discovery of human remains. No, this was something much bigger, or rather, much smaller. When scientists examined LB1 more closely, they discovered it wasn't a child or someone with a disease or condition affecting their growth. This perfectly formed skeleton belonged to an adult of an entirely new species to science. Just imagine the excitement. They were face to face with a new member of the human family tree, and the best part? They found it in the 21st century. But that's not all. Shortly after discovering LB1, archaeologists continued excavating the cave and unearthed the remains of at least 14 more individuals. This confirmed that it wasn't an isolated case. These tiny humans, less than a meter tall, had formed a community on the island of Flores. And do you know what's even more exciting? The discovery of these people solved an old mystery. In Flores, locals had legends about small beings who once lived on the island, called Ebu Gogo. According to the stories, they were small, hairy, and very fast. For centuries, scientists thought these were just myths, but it turns out they might have been based on real events. What's even more intriguing about the discovery is how they got to Flores. The island is surrounded by deep waters that would have been difficult to cross even in prehistoric times. This means that these tiny humans likely used rudimentary rafts to reach the island. Additionally, their average weight was just 25 kilograms, 55 pounds, making them incredibly light. Considering the limited resources on the island of Flores, this made perfect sense being small meant needing less food to survive. But it wasn't just their size that was fascinating. Their way of walking was also unique. Their feet, which were proportionally large and flat, forced them to walk in a peculiar way with slightly bent knees. Imagine a person walking with high steps as if they were constantly climbing stairs. This type of movement allowed them to navigate difficult terrain, though at a slower pace. Their walking style, while different, was well suited to their environment. Now, let's connect this to something we mentioned earlier, the challenges of living on an island like Flores. Here, it wasn't just about being small to adapt to the lack of resources, it was also about being smart. Although their brains were small, with a volume of 380 cubic centimeters, this didn't mean they were less capable. On the contrary, their brains were efficiently designed, especially in areas related to planning and tool use. Yes, these tiny humans were skilled stone tool makers. Over 10,000 tools were found at Liang Buai, some designed for cutting, 
others for hunting, all crafted with surprising precision. And what did they eat? They were hunters and gatherers. One of their main food sources was giant rodents, which could reach the size of a modern rabbit. They also gathered fruits and roots that grew on the island. Although they didn't have access to large quantities of food, their ability to make the most of what nature provided was key to their survival. What made them even more fascinating was their ability to control fire. As we mentioned earlier, they lived in caves like Liangbua, and fire not only helped them cook their food, but also offered protection. On an island full of giant predators, keeping the fire burning could mean the difference between life and death. While our tiny human friends experienced island dwarfism and became smaller, other animals on the island grew to astonishing sizes, a phenomenon known as island gigantism. This created a world where these real-life hobbits weren't just the smallest inhabitants, but also shared their home with some of the most terrifying predators you can imagine. Let's start with one of the most impressive, the Komodo dragon, Varanus komodoensis. This giant, which still exists today, is the largest lizard in the world, and during the time of Homo floresiensis, it was even more fearsome. Komodo dragons can grow over three meters long and weigh up to 90 kilograms. Can you imagine facing one of these predators when you're barely a meter tall? These lizards were the kings of the food chain on Flores, and their hunting style was brutal. Swift ambushes, bites filled with sharp teeth, and to make matters worse, venomous saliva that could incapacitate their prey. Even if you managed to escape, the venom could kill you later. For the hobbits, these dragons were a constant threat, but they weren't the only predators on the island. There was also Leptoptilos robustus, a species of giant stork that stood nearly 1.8 meters tall, taller than Homo floresiensis. As incredible as it may seem, these birds could have posed a real danger, especially to the children and younger individuals of the species. It is believed that these storks hunted small animals, and the humans of Flores weren't beyond their range of prey. Additionally, there were other creatures that made Flores a dangerous place. Venomous snakes, like cobras and vipers, were a constant threat. There were also saltwater crocodiles lurking in coastal areas, limiting the hobbits' access to marine resources. Even something as simple as searching for water or food near the shore could be deadly. Despite all these dangers, Homo floresiensis didn't give up. They used their intelligence, tools, and fire to defend themselves and survive. They likely avoided the most dangerous areas and hunted in groups to protect one another. Their ability to adapt to such extreme conditions is a testament to their resilience. But now we must address an inevitable topic, the end of these small humans. What happened to them? How and why did they disappear after surviving for thousands of years? Let's find out. We know that Homo floresiensis lived on Flores until about 50,000 years ago. That might seem like a long time ago, but in terms of human evolution, it's relatively recent. To put it into perspective, modern humans, Homo sapiens, that's us, were already present in different parts of the world. And this is where things start to get interesting and a little sad. The fossils and stone tools tell us that Homo floresiensis were skilled hunters who managed to coexist with the giants and predators of the island. But the arrival of Homo sapiens around 50,000 years ago marked a dramatic shift. As we mentioned earlier, the hobbits used advanced tools and fire to survive, but modern humans arrived with even more advanced technology and the ability to alter the environment in ways that Homo floresiensis couldn't match. So what happened? One of the most widely accepted theories is that there were conflicts between the two species. Homo sapiens, taller, stronger, and better organized, likely competed for the same limited resources. On an island like Flores, where food was already scarce, this would have created additional pressure on the hobbits, who were already living on the edge of survival. Another possibility is that Homo sapiens introduced changes to Flores' ecosystem, perhaps by hunting the same animals the hobbits relied on as their primary food sources, such as giant rodents and juvenile stegodonts, the dwarf elephants that also lived on the island. Additionally, 
modern humans may have introduced diseases unknown to Homo floresiensis, which could have had devastating consequences. But not everything can be blamed on Homo sapiens. Climate change also played a role. During the time when the hobbits disappeared, the global climate was changing rapidly, affecting rainfall patterns and food availability on floras. It's likely that this combination of factors, competition, ecosystem changes, and adverse climatic conditions led to the extinction of Homo floresiensis. However, the most fascinating aspect is what they left behind. The study of these hobbits teaches us that evolution doesn't follow a fixed path. These tiny humans, with their small brains but remarkable abilities, are a reminder that intelligence and adaptation don't depend on a specific size or a singular formula. And while their disappearance may seem like a sad chapter, it helps us better understand our own story and just how fragile life can be in a changing environment. So, even though they're gone, their legacy lives on, helping us unravel the mysteries of human evolution. Click on the video on your screen to keep learning more with our content. See you in the next video.